What's up guys, T Croc here, welcome to the vlog. Now I've done what you need to turbo a 3G and what you need to supercharge a 3G. Uh, so I decided I might as well do one for what you need to 3.8 Mivex swap a 3G. Um, now I did do a video in the past when I was gonna Mivex swap my own 3G, but things kind of changed and I didn't go through with it. And since that video, some of the information has changed, mainly where you get the Mivex plate. So I'm going to go over that and just explain a couple things because uh, Black Heart Motorsports doesn't do them. Now, I'm gonna put a list probably like right up here of uh, what is basically required for the Mivex swap. It's basically random parts from the 6G74 3.5 Diamante and some from if you still have the original 3.0, there's a couple of parts you have to get off of that motor. Um, now, this isn't the only way to 3.8 Mivex swap a car. I'm just gonna make that clear. Um, but this is probably the most cost-effective way to um, Mivex swap a car without basically doing any kind of extreme fabricating or anything like that or any kind of extreme wiring or anything like that because you're gonna be using the stock ECU versus using a standalone or anything like that in that nature. So, a lot of people will say, well, why would you 3.8 Mivex swap a car versus uh, turbo supercharger for well, for one reliability uh, it doesn't really take much to make 300 horsepower out of it uh, straight bolt-ons and a tune will get you 300 uh, I believe Joey made like 299 and 300 torque uh, and he ran 12 seconds and basically a fully interior stratus so you should be sold off of that right there um, so I'm gonna open the storage unit because basically I'm dropping off some parts and then I'm gonna uh, explain everything and I'll probably show you the plate and just go over a couple of information. It might be a little bit redundant from the last video, um, but I feel like pointing out certain things and kind of showing you guys, cause I actually have uh, a non-Myvec motor, which is very similar. The only thing that's basically different from the Myvec and a non-Myvec 3.8 is you're gonna be wiring an MSD switch to activate the MyVec. So let me open the storage unit up and I will uh, basically go over everything. So this right here is a 6075 non-MyVec. Um, I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth from parts pile to over here. So like I said, the 6075 non-MyVec is very similar to the MyVec. All the difference between the MyVec is all you're doing is adding the RPM switch for the MyVec to activate. Um, and then there's like a little tidbits that are changed. So here's basically the spare part. So here is a 6074 coolant housing um, that basically bolts on to right here. Um, and this is gonna give you the clearance so you can actually put, because the Myvec plate's gonna bolt up right here. This is gonna give you the clearance so you can actually run the Myvec plate. Um, now, if you run AC and heat, then you have your coolant housing uh, heater pipes right here. Now, I'm just gonna show you what I did because mine's a track car and I'm not gonna use them. I just welded them up right there and right there and because I'm not running AC or heat. Now, for some more 6074 parts, you're gonna actually have to need a power steering bracket, which it's missing, but it's right here. Uh, bolts up right there. And you're going to need an alternator bracket from the 674 which bolts right up to the front for uh, the alternator um, you're also going to need these are actually 6074 uh, fuel rails uh, they're gonna be need to be modified as you can see they don't fit quite and you have to cut these tabs off and just re-weld them um, now talking about fuel you can run the stock fuel pressure regulator or if you were like me, or like a lot of people, they end up upgrading to an adjustable one. That way you can actually look at your full press re regulator and just look at your fuel pressure and uh, basically adjust it from here and there. Um, now you don't have to, the 6074 ones are probably the easiest to come by, uh, but if you're an aesthetics person and you don't like these lines, you can actually get the VR4 
ones and they're actually the same thing and you're probably gonna have to you're gonna have to modify this loop as well i know a lot of people take some a and housings and um make like a fuel rail loop right here um i believe you can use the 3sx fuel uh fuel rail loop and i think it might clear i'm not entirely sure on that part but like i said a lot of people just uh they make their own loop right there um so that is basically it oh forgot. you're gonna need a 6074 lower timing bracket because the motor is a lot taller uh from your 3.0 you're gonna need a the passenger side bracket and you're also gonna need the reluctor wheel that comes from off the time you're gonna need that as well now for exhaust um I know a lot of people ask about my exhaust setup and this is from road racing engineering out in California. They actually make this for the 4G when they were actually racing the 4G. Uh, these manifolds flow a lot better than stock. They flow a lot better than the RPWs because a, a lot of people in the past were going with the RPWs and someone actually tested these and made a lot more power. The diameter is bigger and the flow is a ton better. The only problem is you're going to have to find someone to make you a downpipe. Now, my downpipe is custom. It's over here in my other parts pile. I had a friend make mine for me uh, with a vibrant uh, ultra quad resonator just to quiet it down some. And that's how I did my exhaust setup. Now, some people take the stock manifolds and just have someone uh, fabricate a downpipe. Uh, but if you want to get the best bang for your buck, you're probably going to have to go with these. Or unless you can find someone to take the Rip Mods long tubes and extend them a little bit. Because since the motor is a lot taller, then a lot of things do not fit the uh, 3.8. Now, I know high Tech said they made a header that would clear. But the last time I checked who actually bought the high Techs, they did not clear. Um, I know some people will swap over. This is a 3.5 uh, oil pan. It's a lot shorter and it gives a lot of people more clearance. Personally, I would not run that oil pan because the Myvec oil pan has baffles bit, built into it. So uh, it prevents the oil from sloshing around. And that's just personal preference for me. And that's why I would just choose that. Um, also, you're going to need to modify this right here the pcv valve you have to cut it re-weld it uh weld weld the hole shut and then basically make a new pcv valve right here now the reason behind that is because you're not going to be able to bolt this on it looks like it's bolting on right now but actually let me when i bolt it on proper it hits right there so that's why we're cutting that off And that's basically it. Uh, throttle body, I use my S90. Uh, it's the same diameter. So I would go with that route as well. Um, I think I have covered everything. So I'm going to put all this up and I'm going to bring the heads out and show you how the plate bolts on. This right here is basically the main piece that makes this all work. Now, a lot of people are wondering why we need this piece. Well, the Myvec is, has a different ignition system. It's a coil on plug, and we basically run this crappy distributor. Um, so basically, we cannot use, you know, the, our ECU is not meant to do coil on plug. Now, if you do a standalone, like 6075 3G, then you can run coil on plug. But since we don't, we're not running standalone, we have to make this plate. So this plate basically goes right here. So basically the plate attaches to the distributor. It's like a, basically an, an adapter plate and you can slide it on like so. I'm not gonna slide it on all the way. And then this oil feed line runs to the Myvec solenoid and that's it. And this is how we run my back. Um, now you do need this, this RPM switch and you have to wire this up to the distributor. And I think this to the my solenoid as well. And this, it has chips to basically when you want the my to engage 
and you put the chip into there and that's how we activate my vac so since the airplanes are keep doing their flyby rounds i just basically came in my truck to finish it off um so that's really it like i said this is a very simple swap there's a couple of things that i know a lot of people think you know the little fabrication here and there um but it's a very it's basically putting legos together for this swap uh, but that was probably the biggest hurdle is getting that plate made so Joey Miller on Facebook is the one that's doing them um, if you're a part of any of the the 3g groups uh, 3g owners club 3g uh, he's in the Stratus group as well since he owns a Stratus uh, and whatever other club 3, uh, 3g groups are out there I'm banned from a couple uh, long story um, but He's the guy you want to get to, and I think, like I said, this will be his last batch of ones he's making. He's actually going through a company to get these made, and I think they weren't selling as fast. Like, his first batch sold really fast, and this one's, like, taking a while to sell. So I told him I would make a video to let people know that these plates are still being made because if you type in Blackheart Motorsports, the website does not come up. So I know when some people were referencing my video, they would go to Blackheart Motorsports, and they couldn't find anything. So that's why I'm redoing this video to say, it's basically the same thing except you're just going to another person for your plate um now if you don't want to do uh you don't want to use the stock ecu and use standalone then you don't need the plate but this makes everything a lot simpler and for tuning if you need someone to tune the 3.8 myvec i highly advise you to use cody um i've made videos about him as well there is a thread on club 3g that you can contact him through um but that's it uh next video will probably be uh, me at Battle of the Bay. I think I told you guys about that drifting uh, event. It's a drifting event slash car show. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. Uh, maybe I'll wear the GoPro chest piece or something like that. That'll make it a lot easier. Uh, maybe do some in-car ride-alongs or anything like that. Um, but that is probably going to be my next video coming up. See you guys next time.